coming our the way. kitchen sink. Never good when Carol warns you about the kitchen sink. No. So uh, pay attention to uh, Carol's broadcast. And also uh, there's plenty more information on the BBC website for you as well. And if you are really, uh, you need a local update, then obviously BBC Local Radio is always really handy when those sorts of things happen. Now, from cold and rain to the other extreme now, mm. four marathons in four days with temperatures reaching up to 30 degrees. This is what Louise <laughs> has got herself into as she takes on this year's Sport Relief Challenge. Uh, she's up with uh, another bunch of celebs, including Radio One's uh, Nick Grimshaw, uh, Frankie Bridge, who was on the breakfast sofa a few weeks ago. They've begun this 100-mile trek um, across the Namib Desert. We'll be speaking to Louise live in a moment, fingers crossed. Uh, but first, let's take a little look at the journey she's embarking on. Well, Louise and the other trekkers have travelled to Namibia in southwest Africa. They've started their challenge on the edge of the desert. The first day will mean a gruelling 35-mile bike ride through a river valley. So fat, tired bikes, isn't yes. it? So uh, that's how they get through the sand. Day two, they'll walk 24 miles in 30-degree temperatures to June Camp 1. On day three, they will walk or maybe sand ski to reach June Camp 2. Very handily named, aren't they? <laughs> and on day four, the final day, uh, Louise and the gang will travel another 13 miles, either on foot or by bike, I don't know if you get a choice or not, to eventually wow. the finish line. OK. Shall we try our very best and speak to Louise now? Morning, Lou. How are you? Oh, my goodness me, it is lovely to speak to you both. Very, very good morning. And I've been sitting here snuggled under an umbrella for completely different reasons to Carol's weather forecast. It could not be more extraordinary out here. Uh, you said it was 30 degrees. Um, it is well over 30 degrees. We've been out on our fat bikes for, I think, two hours. And I'm just, I know you can't see me. I think that may be something to do with the extreme heat it means that the cat doesn't work. So I'm going to have to describe the scene for you. I'm just looking ahead of me and I could see miles and miles of the most beautiful sand. And I thought sand was just a yellow colour, but it's red, it's amber, it's kind of clotted cream colour. And then in the distance, this beautiful valley, which we're making our way towards. And um, I mean, you know, we were meant to be going to Mongolia and uh, the, the change of temperature just could not be more extreme. I'm joined underneath. Well, you would not believe how, how useful a BBC breakfast umbrella can come in as well. I'm joined underneath the umbrella by one of my teammates, Krishnan, um, who's sitting here with me. Are you enjoying the rest, Krishnan? How's it going for you today? The rest is wonderful. The cycling's terrible. I don't know what I was thinking. I thought I, thought I could cycle, but I mean, this is really hard. It's very, very hot. The uphills are really difficult. I mean, you're sort of, you're going at slower walking pace um, on these bikes because the sand is so soft and I keep falling off. Have you fallen off? Well, I mean, because I'm stupidly wearing cycling shoes, clips. Mm. So when you go very, very slowly, you get your feet out of your clips and you just kind of go over sideways. Oh, you love it, Sally and Dan. So, you know, I've, I've, I've done quite a lot of cycling, as you know, but I've <laughs> never ridden a, a, one of these bikes. And I fell off in the first 30 seconds over onto my back proper tumble but you know me i got up i carried on and laughed it's the only thing we can do louise tell us a bit about we've seen some pictures yesterday of you um struggling with your eyes you've got conjunctivitis or something is that right can you believe it, uh, Dan and Sally? So I leave the UK. Um, I started feeling ill a few days ago. Um, I arrived here uh, with a wonderful cold and then um, um, on the plane managed to get conjunctivitis. So I woke up this morning. Um, it's, I mean, I'm, it's terrible. I'm sorry everybody has to hear about this uh, while they're having their breakfast and everything. Um, I woke up this morning. Well, I woke up yesterday. I couldn't really see out of one eye. Uh, this morning I woke up and I could open my eyes. I'm like, that's really great. But um, we've had to cobble together um, a pair of glasses with sunglasses over them because I'm not allowed to wear my contact lenses the foreseeable um, so yeah it's been um, a tough start not what I was expecting and it's honestly it is going to be really difficult out here isn't it Krishnan and we are trying to drink but it's going to be really get us down I think too it's much harder than I was expecting I mean I, in my in, inside I was thinking this is going to be the, the bit I can do <laughs> and that I can't even do this so <laughs> We've all got our comfort zone, so Kristen yeah, was, was super confident about the cycle. Um, Karim is definitely struggling on the cycle today. He's going, I'm young, but it doesn't mean I'm fit. Actually, Grimmy and I have been cycling together, and we're quite enjoying it. I mean, as for Rob Rinder, we have not seen him for dust. <laughs> he's already at the break, I think. I think he's, he's already halfway there. He just left me for dead. <laughs> Louise, not I quite, mean, luckily, I have but he's to say, gone. I'm a little bit worried about you. Now, I know you had a cold 
leaving the UK and you've got conjunctivitis now. Um, yeah. What, what's the next big challenge for you today? What's the thing that you're most concerned about now? Um, well, I'm pretty concerned that um, I arrived here as a sort of utter shambles. Um, I'm hoping the heat is going to sort of burn out the cold. Uh, yeah, so what's happening now? I think, I, I think we've got 35, is it 35 miles we're doing today? 35 See, miles. 35 miles. And we haven't, we haven't even done eight, have we? And we are absolutely exhausted. Not even got to our first. We, there are breaks along the way that we can stop and fill up with water. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're, I think we've been going for an hour and a half and we're not even a quarter of the way, are we? See, I'm delirious. I don't even know how far we've got to go. So there's a long way ahead of us today. And the thing about the bike is you think, okay, so when you're cycling, actually, there's sort of a bit of a breeze. And you think, actually, tomorrow there will be no breeze because we will just be inching our way very slowly up very large sand dunes. Do you see them? That's Krishna is point he's pointing to them. Hill. There's a big hill, and that's what's next. <laughs> <laughs> the big sand dune. And it's just kind of filling me with dread. <laughs> Oh, we're loving it out here. Can you tell? <laughs> yes. But we're all doing it for a good cause. And that's it. I was just going <laughs> to briefly mention... And I am still happy and I'm still laughing. Yeah, and, that, and for those who are wondering, we'll tell you how you can support Louise on Sport Relief in a moment. But Louise, you're, you're particularly raising money and raising awareness of mental health issues this year, aren't you? Yeah, this our challenge is particularly for mental health issues, and we're all really, um, you know, when it changed from Mongolia to Namibia, they said to me, "Do you think everybody will change?" I was like, "I was like, I know that they all feel really strongly about it. They will still do the challenge, and we are all still here, and we know, you know, we know that's why we're doing it." So. I'm starting to count, and also every time one pedal goes around, I think it's all oh, okay. This is for a good, this is a good reason why I'm out here in the heat of the midday sun, and it's not even midday. Louise, I woke up laughing in the tent this morning. I have no idea, honestly. You I'm mentioned delirious. your tent. Well, Who are you sharing with? Tell us. Well, well, this is so embarrassing because I am a walking cough and cold. Yeah. I've been banished to a tent all on my own. Oh, no. I was going to share with Sam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And Dr. Zoe said I had to be on my own. Oh, no. So I'm on my own, but I'm next to uh, Rob and Karim, and then also Grimmy and Frankie. So I can hear, obviously, we're intense, so you can hear all their chatter. So I feel like I've got company in the night. Aww. And Krishna, you, you've got, well, you, it's nice having your own tent, isn't it? I've got space, Sal, and, and Sam is absolutely horrified, Sam Womack, because my tent is so messy. Ah, now that does not surprise me. That's all. Louise, Doesn't sending it? you loads and loads and loads of luck. That's Louise talking to Krishna Guru Murthy there. Yes, I'll just well. tell you who the rest of the team are. So she's got uh, Kareem, who's Kareem Zerowell, who you'd seen on Strictly recently from CBBC, Nick Grimshaw from Radio 1, uh, Krishna we heard there, Krishna Guru Murphy, Rob Rinder, and also Samantha Womack uh, joining Louise on this epic journey trying to raise money for sport relief. And if you want to support sport relief, here's how. If you would like to support Louise's efforts and make a donation to sport relief, you can donate £10 by texting the word HEAT to 70210 or to donate £20, text HEAT to 70220. Texts will cost your donation amount plus your standard network message charge and 100% of your donation will go to Sport Relief. You must be 16 or over and please do ask the bill payer's permission. For full terms and conditions, more information or to donate any amount you'd like online, visit bbc.co.uk forward slash Sport Relief. She was a good boy, so who was that? No, give her a job. She's marvellous. <laughs> okay. uh, it's uh, one minute past nine. We'll be speaking to Louise again tomorrow. And buying beds for pupils, making home visits to parents and helping children shop at the supermarket. All things that one head teacher has been doing with her staff and they're having to do that to help out. Sarah Smith, who's in charge of two Blackpool primary schools, says her teachers are now more like social workers. Abby Jones has been meeting parents who say they can't survive without the support.